Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve average waiting time. So I made a little picture over here. This is time, this axis here. So we have three customers. One customer arrives at time one, one customer arrives at time two, another arrives at time four. And we're given this in the form of a list of pairs. So the first value in each pair is going to be the time that each person arrives. Now the second value is a bit more interesting. That's the amount of time it takes for this customer to have their order prepared by a chef. But we have a single threaded chef this time. And so a chef can only cook one thing at a time. So basically we want to know how much is each person going to wait. And then if we know that, we want to compute the average wait time among all customers. Now, it's not going to make a ton of sense until we actually run the simulation. So let's do that. So here, this customer, remember, they're going to have two. That's how long it takes their order to be prepared. So like down here, their order will be finished at time three. So Orange waited two units to have their order prepared, just the amount of time it took their order to get made. What about this purple person? They arrived at time two and their order takes five time units to prepare. So could we just say something like this? Okay, at time two and then, you know, maybe at time seven, their order is finished. Nope, these are overlapping. So what do we do? Well, we say that this should probably be shifted by one to the right. So in other words, I'm going to kind of draw it this way where like this white line I'm drawing here is the wait time. This is where their order was not being prepared. But at this point, their order was being prepared. So then from three all the way to, let's say, eight, because their order takes five time units to prepare. This is where their order is actually being prepared. It's of length five. But they were waiting here for one time unit. So their total wait time was actually six. So I'm going to put a little six down here. And now you probably get where I'm going with this. And if you do, I would encourage you to actually just pause the video and try to code up the solution yourself. You can always come back and like, comment and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> but I'll continue with the simulation regardless. So again, we see that the previous person ended at time eight, but this person arrived at time four. Okay, well, let's start their time at eight and it takes three time units for them to have their thing be prepared. So at time 11, it'll be finished. And during this time, they are waiting. So the total wait time for this person was three plus four, that is seven. So now what do we do? Well. I want to mention that what were we doing with these values? Theoretically, you could have added them to an array. Then at the end, you could sum that array and then divide it by the length of that array, which in this case was three. But why use extra space if we don't have to? Because if all we care about is the sum anyway, let's just keep track of the sum. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be summing these values as we go. We'll get, I think in this 15, we'll divide that by three. We get a nice whole number five. And that's what we're going to go ahead and return. OK, so now it kind of looks like an interval problem, doesn't it? And it kind of is. By the way, they tell us that the input of customers is actually sorted already based on the arrival time. Again, that's kind of like interval problems. It reminds me of that, at least, where in every interval problem, you usually sort by the start time of the intervals, right? So that's pretty much it. That's the problem. So how are we going to solve it? The little trick is that we don't actually have the end time of the interval. We kind of have to calculate that ourselves. So the way I'm going to run this simulation is this. I already told you I'm going to keep track of the total wait time. The second thing I'm going to keep track of is what is the current time? Initially, it's zero, right? So then we get the first customer. OK, they arrived at time one. So OK, so now it's actually time one and their order takes uh, two time units to prepare. So we add two to the current time, just like we kind of added it to the total. So now it's actually time equals three. Great. So now we get to the second interval. They arrived at time two. OK, so this is the problem. Our time notice is greater than the arrival time of the next customer. That's the problem. If it's less than or equal to the arrival time, it's OK. But if the time is greater, that means we're actually at time equal three. But this interval started at time equals two. So let's just get the difference. Let's get this length, right? That's what we care about. We want that length. So let's say time 
subtracted by the arrival time of that customer, which in this calculation is going to be uh, the current time three subtracted by the arrival time of two. So that's going to be a one, right? And then we know that the length of the waiting time is five. So we can just take that five, add it to this value. And that's how we got the six. Okay, great. But how do we update the current time? Well, it was time equals three. It took five time units for their order to be prepared. So let's just say that the time is now going to be eight. So now we're over here. Once again, we see that the time eight is greater than the arrival time of the interval, which is four. So once again, do the calculation eight. Uh, minus four is four, which is the length of this portion. The wait time of this guy was three. So three plus four is seven. So that's where we got this from. And I think we're pretty much done. I think that was the whole explanation. I mean, I guess we could set the time now to 11 by adding this three to the time. So eight plus three is 11, but that is pretty much the simulation. This total would have been 15. We divide that by three and then we're done. In terms of the time complexity, since the input is already sorted for us, we don't have to sort it. It is a linear time solution and constant space. Let's code it up. So I'm gonna initialize the current time. I'm gonna initialize the total as zero. And then we're gonna go through customers and I'm actually gonna use unpacking to get the arrival time, which is first. And the second is the time of the order. So actually I'm gonna change that to the order time or maybe I'll just say wait. Actually, I'll, I'll leave it as order. So now we want to know if the time is actually greater than the time that they arrived at, we should add this to the total. So instead of keeping track of how much this person waited for, we're just adding all of that to the total because that's what we care about anyway. So adding to the total the difference between time minus arrival. Now, there's one little edge case I guess I technically didn't go over in the drawing explanation. We initialize our time to zero, but remember the first customer actually arrived at time equals one. So right now, for the first customer, it's actually time equals one, but our variable is set to time equals zero. Well, the way we get around that is if the time is greater than the arrival time, the time will stay the same, We'll just add the difference to the total. But if the time is less than the arrival time or even equal, technically, we could do something like this. We could say the time is now equal to the arrival time. Basically, we're fast forwarding. So imagine we had two intervals that looked like this, like there's a bunch of space in between them. I hope this is a decent way to visualize it, but like this is an interval, then there's a gap here, and then the next customer arrives. That's what I'm saying. Like our time maybe for the first customer ends over here, but now there's a gap. So we can go ahead and fast forward the time to the starting time of the next interval. That's what I'm doing here. Now let's update our two variables here. We should add the order time to total. So that is always gonna be added to the total. So we'll go ahead and do that. And also whatever time it is right now, we definitely want to add the order time to the current time. That part I did kind of go over in the drawing explanation. That's just the length of the second portion of the interval. So here we will add to the time however much the order took. And at the end, we're not returning the total. We're dividing it by the length of customers and we want to return a float. So that's why I'm only putting one slash here. So I'll go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it works. It's relatively efficient. I think this is just kind of random on leak code side. I think there probably is a way to make the code more concise. I think this like to total instead of even having the if statement, we could probably do something like this. Add to it the max of this and probably zero and then time down here. We could probably set it to the max of itself and the arrival time. I think this will also work. Uh, yeah, it does. But I mean, I don't really think that this is a major difference. Like as an interviewer, I really wouldn't care about this. But I know that some of the viewers like to kind of get the most concise code. And there probably is an even more concise solution than this. I just don't think it's worth um, arriving at because I prefer more readable solutions myself. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.